I miss your cousin and old Master Rowan and all the rest of the folk. Someday I'm going on back down there. Tend to you singing, son. Tend to you singing. Uh, Mr. Stevens, how come you to waste so much time down here with our poor folk? Oh, I'm trying to steal us all out of your hearts. Well, maybe this old congregation of mine has got a song in their heart. But they sure ain't got nothing in their pocketbooks. <laughs> <laughs> I never did see such people that. No, no, I didn't mean nothing like that, Mr. Steele. No, sir. That's all right. I owe you a lot more. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You, you figuring on writing some more songs? Mm -hmm. Sometime I'm going to write one about you. About me? Lord, Lord. <laughs> Mr. Steele, that'd be most elegant. Yes, sir. Excuse me, folks. Excuse me. Anything special that you'd like to hear? Didn't my Lord deliver that? That's a good one. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Didn't my Lord deliver Daniel? Deliver Daniel? Deliver Daniel? Didn't my Lord deliver Daniel? And why not every man? He went blows east and the wind blows west. He blows like the judgment and every poor soul that never did pray be glad to pray that day. Didn't my Lord deliver? What are you doing down here? Well, I knew just where I'd find you. You were waiting supper at least a half an hour. Oh, I'm sorry, Morris, and I didn't know it was so late. Well, that's fit to be tied. 
If I were you, I wouldn't let on that I'd been down here again, listening to these. Wait. Wait a minute. What's wrong? No idea. Yeah, well, Dad's got one, too, and if you take my advice... I've got to get to a piano. Tell Mother I'll be right along, will you? But, but Steve... When you, when you do these things, it, it, it makes indignant in my ears. Off tempo, off notes, off everything. Leach, and I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I, I don't think Mozart ever wrote this for you. Oh, if you don't mind, I'd like to keep on trying. You see, Stevie likes this piece. So you, you want to please Stevie, huh? <laughs> oh, Professor Cleaver, do you think he'll ever make a living from his music? Yeah, uh, what's the difference? He's got a soul, a great gift for melody. Oh, but Father says he isn't practical. Yeah, Mark's next house. A genius don't got to be practical. Good evening, my boy. Oh, Stevie, I didn't know. What? Thank you, Professor. <laughs> That's all right. That's a nice little thing. <laughs> but you can do better. <laughs> no, no, don't, uh, please, don't misunderstand me. It's, it's very good. Mm. It's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Not so hard to play a smooth side, either. That's the idea, Professor. Easy to pick up. It might become popular. <laughs> popular, yeah. <laughs> For a day, a month, a year, maybe. But, Stephen, you got music in you that didn't come out yet. Rhythmic emotion. Pathos. That's what you want to cultivate. Maybe someday you'll write something that, that'll live forever. Oh, forever's a long time, Professor. <laughs> well, we shall see what we shall see. Time will tell. And now, children, although, <laughs> although I can see that you both hate to have me go, <laughs> You know what I've been wondering? What? Whether it's me or my piano. Well, pianos are mighty scarce in this town. Stephen Foster, you're positively rude. Susan Pendlin, you're positively bewitching. How's that? You're improving. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ah, your dress. I like you in lavender. It's blue. Uh, I like you in blue. <laughs> That's it. Now, if I can only get a lyric. You might sell it? Mm. And if I did, I could buy you such lovely things. A parasol. Blue to match your lavender dress. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> and all, all sorts of surprises. A little white cottage. The one that's always been waiting for you and for me. With hollyhocks and... Maybe some moonbeams, maybe in fields of sunflowers that run all the way into the horizon. All that with just one song? I could write some more. And then you and I could be together always. Would you like that? Oh, yes, Stephen. Just you and I. <laughs> and the piano. By all means, the piano. <laughs> Finish these in the morning. Yes, sir. Do you have to tinkle in that thing every time you come here? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. But, Father, it's Stevie's new I'm song. I'm sick of them. Sick of being annoyed by his confounded racket. Mr. Pendleton, I wish that you didn't... Be... What our country needs is men, not musicians. This is an age of opportunity. Our far-seeing statesmen in Congress have had the foresight to annex Texas. That's why what good would Texas ever be to us? Too far away. How can we ever get there? The railroad? Railroad bosh, that's some of Pitland's nonsense. Why, you might just as well talk of building a railroad to, to, to California. Should I save something hot for Mr. Stephen? You will save nothing for Mr. Stephen. If he hasn't the sense to... I wonder what's happened to him. Uh, he, he's been busy. Busy? <laughs> he 
The Union crawling out of its swaddling clothes every day, men making history, opportunities for fame and fortune. And what is my son doing? Nothing. Nothing! But father, Stephen's going to be a great musician. Why, there's never been a musician in the Foster family. Why should we suddenly sprout a genius? Work. That's what Master Stephen needs, work. My dear, Dunning must create a place for Stephen in Cincinnati. But Stephen wouldn't want to leave home. He'd be very unhappy. Well, he'd be with his brother, wouldn't he? Yes, but... But what about Susan? Susan. Boy and girl foolishness. I agree with you, Mr. Foster. Stephen should go to work. Susan is a lovely girl, but... After all, Stephen's very young. And it would be a shame if... Hello, Jane. Hello, Stephen. Hello. Huh. So, you finally decided to come home. Oh, Father, you see, I... I understand. Well, my boy, it may interest you to know that I have arrived at a very important decision concerning your career. You are going to work for your brother Dunning in Cincinnati. Don't you think so? Uh, maybe we I'm... will not discuss the matter. I have decided. Hmm? I done saved you all some hot vittles. Thanks, Delia. I'm not hungry. Oh, Stevie. Yes, Jane. Are you going to Susan's birthday party tomorrow night? Of course. Do you mind stopping by for me? Glad to. Come you know? again soon. Won't you, my dear? Thank you, Mrs. Foster. Yeah. All right? Thank you. Well, good night, Jane. Good night, Stevie. Susan, don't forget to make a wish. Yeah. Maybe I can arrange a change of parts. You said they are having a dandy party. Oh, thank you, Stevie. Having a good time? Mm. What did you want to tell me? Well, I'm going to Cincinnati. Cincinnati? Mm -hmm. To work in Dunning's office. But I thought you'd be pleased. Well, I am, Stevie, but... Look. But close your eyes. No, not yet. Cincinnati seems so far. Well, it's only for a little while. Oh, Susan, don't you cry for me. Why, I... Don't you cry for me. Oh, Susan, don't you cry for me. Susan, oh, Susan, you, don't you cry for me. Susanna. 
Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. I'm terribly sorry, excuse me. Excuse me, how great. Come on. <laughs> Jen, excuse me, please. Terribly sorry, I can't help it. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. I've got it. I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Squined to Louisiana, my true love for to see. It rained all night, the day I left, the weather it was dry. The sun so hot, the frost to death. Cincinnati Iron Works, 848. Check. Smith Furniture Company, 56234. 84. Check. File this corrected statement. Yes, sir. Scott. Mm. Stephen. Yes, sir. Surely after all these months, you should be able to make out a simple statement. Not another mistake. Several. Stephen, business and music just won't mix. I'm sorry, Dudley, but honest, I have been trying. I know you have. But it's got to be one thing or the other. Yeah. I'll forget the music. Bravo. That's the sensible thing to do. Good morning, mail, sir. Oh, thank you. Stephen? Yeah. Oh. Hooray. Hooray. Susan, I, I don't understand. Susan and Andrew. Married. Take it so hard, Stephen. You know, try, try and be a philosophical. That that hurt you got in your heart. That that'll all go away. Everything ends. <laughs> and uh, after a while, some other woman always comes along. If you don't mind, Henry, please. <laughs> all right. Well, look, we change the subject. Now, now for the good news I got for you. See what I bring you. Huh? It's made out to me. Yeah, and set your contract from Fort Pond. The biggest music publishers in the country. Looks awful dull. <laughs> well, look what, they, look what they're willing to pay you. Two cents a copy for every copy sold. Wait a minute. I'm forgetting Dunning. And all these little ledgers and all the little figures that jump up at me the left the day. But, uh, Stephen, you're too with, with, your, with, the, with these royalties coming in? No more figures? No more figures. <laughs> no more figures. <laughs> Henry. Thanks. <laughs> Prosy. <it. laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen.
gentlemen, attention please. I want to present to you the composer of that lovely song you have just heard, Mr. Stephen Foster. My public. Ogasa. Gasa. Ah, good evening, Herr Christi. Well, well, how are you, Garçon? Very well, thank you. Uh, so is Mrs. Garçon? Mrs. Garçon? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Wait till I told this one to Mrs. Schnabach. <laughs> She'll bust my sides out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> the usual table here, Christy? Yes, yes, of course, Mr. Schnab uh, uh, Mr. Schnabach is the name, please. You are right. Lead on, Garçon. Thank you. This way, please. Gentlemen, be seated. You too, ladies. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I just discovered here tonight someone else who calls for applause. The famous minstrel king, Miss P. Christie. Who was that applause for just as I came in? Oh, that was for Mr. Stephen Foster, the writer of those beautiful songs. Steve Where is he? You see those two gentsing over there by the table? Yeah. That's him. Mr. Foster, this is an extreme pleasure. Standing before you is Christie. The Christie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, sitting before you is... I have looked forward to this meeting for a long time, Mr. Foster. Uh, but you've got to look backwards if you... you... And your songs are great. And, as you may know, they profit immensely because Christy sings them. <laughs> yeah, well, by the... If you would excuse that, me... That, now, don't mess it. Why, I'm glad to have had your songs come to my attention. And do you know, I recognize you the minute I saw you. You're just like a picture, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got the wrong tin type. And That's... I was going to tell uh, you, Mr. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is Stephen Foster. <laughs> What? Certainly you're wasting your breath. This is Stephen Foster. You're not Foster? No, sir. Oh. I thought there was some mistake. How are you, Mr. Foster? Fairly well, Mr. Christie. I'm delighted to know you. Of course you are. <laughs> and who isn't? Why, even my severest critic, although I know of none, admit that Christie's minstrels are the greatest unit of musical entertainment that ever trod the boards. A troupe of 20 star entertainers. A boyhood dream of mine. Now, a national institution. <laughs> national institution? <coughs> Foster, you'd make a grand minstrel man. Put yourself under my wing. Stephen Foster under your wing? <laughs> uh, you ain't good enough to be under his feet. Just what do you mean by that remark, my annoying fellow? I mean that Stephen Foster is a genius, not a black and faced noisemaker. And someday he'll write great symphonies instead of silly tunes for a lot of cheap minstrel singers. Sir, I resent those remarks. I'm the foremost figure in minstrelsy. Evidently, you don't realize my rank. Yes, I do. I realize your rank. <laughs> so is your show. And so are all minstrels. Put that in your pipe, uh, smoke it. Sir, your remarks are not even worthy of my contempt. I only wish I could say in English what I'm thinking about you in German. You ham fatter. You dare call me a ham fat? By the great god Thespis, I'll challenge you to a duel. Pistols at sunrise. This is the sunrise, nothing. Fire axes for me at any time. Or nothing. Nah. <laughs> Man, gentlemen, I'm a lot too busy to go to any funerals. Come on now. Shake your hands and forget it. <laughs> oh, well, all right. I'm willing. Here's wishing you just what you are wishing me. I see he's insulting me. Mr. Foster, I'll be at the Opera House for the rest of the week. A box will always be there at your disposal. Oh, many thanks. Thank you. Oh, 
there he is. Foster, at last. Stephen. Jane. What a surprise. What a pleasant one. Hello, Professor. Hello. May I present Mr. and Mrs. Wade, Professor Cleaver and Hello. Stephen Foster. How do you do, Mrs. Wade? Mr. Wade, sit here with us, won't you please? Well, thank you, sir. It's an honor to meet you, Mr. Foster. Oh, thanks. Uh, how's everybody at home? Just fine. Mother? She's well. Send you her love. Funny, there's not much news. Everything's just about the same. Of course, you know Susan's married. No, oh, Steve, hard she was. I do wish you could see their new home. It's perfectly beautiful. Really? Andrew's doing very well, you know. Nice fellow. Very. And just the husband for Susan. They're divinely happy. I... Excuse me, won't you please? I... Something wrong? Well, I'll tell you, I, it's terribly important. There's a contract and I have an appointment I forgot to sign. I'm so glad to meet you both. You know, it is nice that you talk about Susan like that to Stephen. Oh, I didn't realize. I must explain. Stephen, mm -hmm. just a moment. I'm sorry. Come on over here. Let's sit down. I've got so many things I want to ask you. Tell me about your new contract. Oh, Firth Pond want to publish my songs. Well, that's wonderful. Aren't you glad to see me? Of course. Aren't you lonely here, Stephen? Sometimes. After a while, it just gets to be a habit. Then before long, you don't mind. Why don't you come home? Because, oh, well, you know how everybody at home feels about my music. But you're a success now. Or well, you even have a contract. They'd be awfully proud of you. Uh, I'm not so sure. I'm going home on the boat tomorrow night. Why don't you come with me? Make your mother very happy. Please. What are you thinking about? How nice it is to be going home. Isn't it? You know, I used to worry about you, Stephen. Why? Oh, down in Cincinnati all alone. No one to look after you. No one who really understood you. You know, I think every man should have a home. With someone who's fond of you. Someone to talk to. <laughs> Sweet. Stephen. Jane. Nicely, son. 
It's a good little song, Stevie. Well. And if introduced by me, it might be a success. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make him my usual generous offer. Fifteen dollars for the rights to sing it before publication. Huh? All right, twenty-five. Five hundred. Five hundred? Mm. Are you mad? You don't understand. That's for all rights. The privilege of publishing it under your own name as composer. <laughs> you are mad. No, just heard of. Married. <laughs> well, I'd be mad, too, if I refused a proposition like that. <laughs> all right, Stevie, I'll expect you at the theater to rehearse me in my new song. Yes. Here you are, 20, 40, 500. Did you hear that, Jane? Stephen has sold one of his songs for $500. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, wonderful. My cake, it'll be burned to a crisp. Well, you don't seem very happy about my deal with Christy. I am. Why do you always have to tell everyone the news before me? Oh, Mother just happened to be here. That's just it. Somebody always happens to be here. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of living in a house all cluttered up with relatives, where I can't walk without tripping on a brother or a sister. I can't stand it any longer. Stephen, stop that. Stephen, I want a home of my own. I do too, Jen. As a matter of fact, I thought of putting all this money aside. But I'll this need is... some of it for new clothes. You see, Dunning's invited us to go on his boat down to the Rowan Plantation. And you'll want me to look as nice as the others, won't you? You may have the clothes, dear, but I can't afford to go away just now. I have to work. Well, I must have some pleasure out of life. What do you expect me to do? Sit around this stupid old house all the time? Sorry, dear, but I can't go. Oh, but Jesse Lightner's going. And Morrison, Harvey, and Mary Ann, and Mrs. Prescott. Listen, dear, now we talk about it later. Here, take care of this, will you? I have to go to rehearse Christy in the new song. You will come to the theater tonight. I'd rather not. Oh, but Christy's introducing old folks at home. You know I don't approve of minstrels. It was a minstrel who gave us $500. All right, Stephen, I'll come. Good girl. Afternoon. I'm sorry, Stephen, but important business kept me away. Well, yes, but look, you didn't have this, and you can't be up in the new song. We've got to hurry. I'm not going to sing it. You're not? Why? I've got a better idea. What? You're going to sing it. Oh, Mr. Christie, what? I can't sing. It's all I can do to croak out my own tunes. You've got a voice. That's true, my boy, but think of the big boost it'll be for the song, for me, for my show. Stephen Foster, local composer, sings Christie's new composition for the first time on any stage. Mr. Christie, well, uh, come on, Stephen. Oh. Gentlemen, be seated. Well, Mr. Bones, how are you this evening? Me? <laughs> oh, boy. I'm the personification of health, Mr. Christie. Good. Who was that lady I saw you with this afternoon? <laughs> uh, that was no lady. Uh, that was my wife. <laughs> well, Mr. Tambo, you seem to be enjoying yourself this evening. <laughs> enjoying myself? I sure is. <laughs> you know, I got the bestest joke in the world, Mr. Christie. Do you mind telling it? You know, our cat has chickens. Wait a minute now, wait a minute. Whoa, how on earth could a cat have chickens? You remember when you were down to my house and you left a big basket of chickens on the kitchen table? I remember that distinctly, yes. Uh, our cat has them. <laughs> And now I have the honor of presenting to you my latest composition, The Old Folks at Home, sung for the first time on any stage. Jane, that's Stephen's song. And as a special treat for you, and in honor of my old friend and fellow composer, Mr. Stephen Foster, I have prevailed upon him to render this beautiful ballad. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Stephen Foster. So, I know it was. Why don't you go back and congratulate him? You don't mind? Of course not, dear. expect me to believe that? Why, Stevie, every bit of it was you. No one else could ever write a melody that would make me feel like a... Like, that could make me feel the way I do. How did your husband like it? Very much. Why haven't you and Jane been to see us? We used to have such fun. Have you forgotten? No, I haven't forgotten. I haven't forgotten anything. I'm so, so proud of you. It really was awfully nice of you to come back and to see me. Thank you. Good night. Good night. You will come to see us soon, won't you? Oh, I forgot. You're going with us, aren't you? Going with where? To Kentucky. Of course, oh. you know about it. Well, goodbye until then. Goodbye. Until then. Joe, I got something for him. Hmm? Mr. Stephen, old Joe ain't here anymore. Oh, I thought he came back. Yeah. He done that all right. Guess he knew the good Lord was fixing to call him. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I'd have liked him to have known that I kept my promise. You like it? I loved it. You think you can play it for me? Oh, yes. <laughs> I've improved, really. Do you remember how dreadful I used to be? You were pretty bad. about it. Yes, I suppose so. You? Oh, I don't know. Stevie, you were so strange that night outside the theater. Why? Strange situation, I guess. After all, once upon a time you were supposed to be in love with me and now, well, you're Mrs. Robinson. Why'd you do it, Susan? Why? You can't blame me very much, can you? We heard how you were behaving in Cincinnati. What'd you hear? Well, oh, I didn't expect you to give up your music. I wouldn't have wanted you to. But there were all sorts of rumors. And they hurt. I felt you didn't care enough for me to try. Oh, Stevie, why didn't you? I told you I didn't. Well, that can't possibly matter now. Was it, Jane? Was it? Well, after all, she loved you, too. Did you believe her? You let me go on loving you and waiting. Oh, Susan, why did you try to kill something that, that can't ever die? I needed you then. I need you now. I'll always need you. But there's no reason why I can't help you and see you. Surely we can meet as old friends. We made a mistake. A terrible mistake. I'm awfully fond of Andrew. Just as you're fond of Jane. If you don't mind, I'd like to speak to Stephen alone. Of course. I knew it. I knew it all the time. What? About you and Susan. How often have you met her secret? You're being very silly. Oh, am I? From the moment you stepped on that boat, I knew why you came. The way you looked at her and the way she looked at you. It was all quite obvious. Please, dear, you... Don't deny it. You were in love with her once and you're still in love you're with her. You're upsetting yourself about nothing at all. You think so? You're not to see Susan again. Jane, stop it. Let's not make things any worse than they are. Oh, I'm, I'm only your wife. I know you don't care how I feel. But... There's going to be someone else to think about.
the Sandman will be here and you won't have your nighty on. Oh, Daddy, more, more. Boy, <laughs> more. All right. Why don't we play? Hmm? Minstrels. You want to play minstrels? Oh, yes, I do. All right, princess. Minstrels it is. Go in. Town ladies sing this song, do da, do da. The Kent Town racetrack five miles long, oh do da day. I went down da with my hat came dim, do da, do da. I came back home with a pocket full of tin, oh do da day. Gwine to run all night, gwine to run all day. I bet my money on the bobtail nag, somebody bet on the day. Tilda, have your supper. Oh, but, Mummy, this is very important. Tilda? Daddy, will you please fix Brown Bear? Well, I'll try it. <laughs> and, Daddy, you won't forget to kiss him goodnight before you go to bed, will you? I won't. But act like your rowdy friends. Oh. Stephen, I don't mean to keep nagging you. You haven't written a song in six months. But, dear, I... You used to. I thought when we got home, you'd settle down. But you haven't. Well, I've tried. Heaven knows I've tried. Hmm. Maybe that's the trouble. Stephen. Hmm. I've given up everything for you. And for what? Nothing. All my clothes are out of style. I can't even go anyplace anymore. Other women don't have to save and scrape. Stephen, you're leaning up against that new wallpaper again. And what about our debts? What about Marion? You've simply got to earn more money. All right, I will. You've been saying that for months. And another thing. I see by the billboards at Christie's Minstrels at the Opera House. Yes, Many work. But I like him. He's my friend. He's a common, vulgar minstrel. And I don't want you to go near him. All right. Word of honor? Yes, I promise. Don't you want any supper? Thank you. I'm going out to the office to work. Everyone on the house, Mr. Foster. Oh, no, thanks. Gotta be getting home. No one to love in the beautiful world full of warm hearts and bright beaming eyes. Where is the lone heart that nothing can find? That is lovely beneath the blue sky. No one to love. No one to love. Most disconcerting to my artistic sensibilities. I wish to... Highly say... desist. Uh, but, uh, I... Stop it! Continue, continue. No one to love. No one to love. Intend to tolerate this. This is enough, sir. To your feet, I shall give you a lesson in the art of self-defense. But I was... I don't care to bandy words. To your feet, sir. <laughs> Get up. My 
good man. Uh, it might be nice if we were to talk this thing over. There's a... Here's the air. Mister, what's the matter? Just witness the humiliation of a great artist. But even in defeat, Stephen, the great Christie always has a smile for his friend. <laughs> Come on, you stand up, you girl. You have saved my life, Stephen. Also my honor. That calls for a drink. No, no it doesn't. Oh, oh sir, that calls for you to go home. Take me home, dear old mother. Where do you live? Huh? Where do you live? I live in a house, what, what, what kind of a house? Well, a house with a tree in front of it. What kind of a tree? A kind of a tree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whiskey is the curse of man. It is the devil's brew. <laughs> Who did that? Somebody else. Come on. No, that is the devil. You never sound like a Christian, I see. You know that. There it is. Oh, no, Stevie, this ain't my place. Wake up the whole house. Whose house is this? Mine. It's a pretty house, but your wife don't like minstrels. Yeah. Nobody hey. likes minstrels anymore. Hey, yeah. Wait a minute. Why I'm don't not. you let me... Uh, come on in here and I'll eat you some coffee. I don't want any coffee, Stevie. Gonna I'm going to go back and get that man who insulted yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, Come on. Man. Nobody can insult the great Christie, Stevie. Huh? She'll oh. never do that to him. <laughs> you know right. that, don't right. you? Yeah. Let's take it. Oh, whiskey is a curse of man. It's a good thing you pulled me off of him, Stevie. Yeah. You know good. that. Good thing. Oh, whiskey is a curse of man. It is the devil's brew. It burns a flame. I don't want any coffee. I want to go home, and Stevie. Stay right there and keep quiet. Why don't they do the man through it? Oh, whiskey is the curse of man. It is the devil's brew. Whoa. Madam. This is uh, an unexpected pleasure. <coughs> oh, no, 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 no. Must be out of my way. <laughs> of course, you know, uh, yeah, you're probably right. Oh, listen. Where do you go? I'm sure I don't know. Christy. Oh, Christy. Christy! What'd you say to him? Not a word. Well, you must have said something. I said nothing. You broke your promise, didn't you? Well, if you just let me explain, you see, there was a fight. That's quite obvious. Look at well, you. Let me explain. Stephen, you've been drinking. Blame, will you, please? Don't lie to me. I'm not in my habit of lying. In a drunken brawl with a common minstrel. I... Oh. I could have forgiven you anything. Your crazy mood, your eccentric habits, even your ridiculous song. But I can't forgive you this. There's no use trying to go on any longer. This is the end. And if you can't support Marion, I will. Stephen, I'm leaving you. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, I'm the one to leave. You and Marion ought to stay here. No, oh, don't worry. I'll always send enough to take care of you both. Where are you going? I don't know. Hotel, maybe. Maybe the first pond in New York.
My good man, tell Mr. Foster Edwin P. Christie. The Christie is here. Thank you. talent and your genius. Two years in New York grinding out a lot of trash. You know, when you came here, you promised we'd work on a symphony together. Mm. Only one movement we finished, and even now, yet, we got we to gotta correct it. You're right, Henry, but symphonies, oh, they're a thing of the heart. Public pays for the trash. But, uh... but Steve, we, we, we got to find time for both. I know. I'm determined to make money, and with my music. Stephen, my boy, once more I must congratulate you. You have scored again. Whereas Lulu Gone is a positive success. Last night I introduced it for the first time, and the audience rose to me. And threw things? <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Glad to see you. Thanks. And I'm glad to see this. I've just been pounding out a new one. Let's see how you like the swing of it. Yeah. Look. Susan. What are you two doing in New York? We've come to take you to luncheon. All the way from Pittsburgh to take me to luncheon? Why not? <laughs> of course, there are a few trivial reasons. New dresses, Andrew's banking business, and... <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. May I present my friend Mr. Christie and Mr. and Mrs. Robinson? Delighted. We had the pleasure of seeing you perform in Pittsburgh. Ah, Pittsburgh. A delightful spot. You know, I've often wished that I'd been born there. And I assure you, if it ever occurs again, I shall see that it takes place in your fair city. <laughs> And now, if you'll excuse me, I'll take my leave. Oh, must you go? I hope so. Ah, oh, friend Cleaver, our partings always give you such sweet sorrow. <laughs> Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> well, what about that luncheon, Stephen? We're going to the Astor House. Astor House it is. You're going too, Professor. It's a pleasure. I sure I'd love to. Thank you. Come on, Stephen. Oh, my. Are these your songs? Mm -hmm. This is a new one. My old Kentucky home. I must hear that for... Thanks. Sympathetic tune. <laughs> now, what do you suggest, Stephen? Oh, what would you like to do? <laughs> Tell you what? What? Let's go to Barnum's Museum and make a day of it. Splendid. Well, you have to excuse me. I must get back to work. I should oh. too. No, no, not you, Steve. Unless you, it's good that you relax yourself for a little bit. You know, you make him go, Susan. <laughs> He's been working anyway too hard lately. <laughs> then it's all settled. I'm sorry you won't join us, Professor. Well, some other time. Come on, Stephen. I want to have a pink lemonade. And because of that, this charming lady has not 
shaved in 20 years. <laughs> now then, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll all step down to this end of the hall, I'd like to call your particular attention to the Scottish giant, a man who stands eight feet tall without his stockings. With his stockings, just right for more. Now then, friends, if you'll all step in a little closer so I'll not have to raise my voice, I'd like to tell you something about this giant. Your husband's gone mad on this diaper situation. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Andrew. Andrew, can I see the waxworks? Well, just a minute, dear. Uh, I'll take another half dozen. Please, Andrew. You take her, Stephen. I'll be along in a minute. All right, Andrew. Here, two more for you. Now on the wind this one out over here. <laughs> two, please. Thank you, sir. This may be pretty scary. Oh, I'm not afraid. <laughs> Good. Oh. Dorman, could you tell me, please, what time the next lecture commences? Possibly he's very deaf. Possibly you're right. <laughs> well, my dear madam, it looks as if I would have to be your lecture. Now, if you would just kindly step to this end of the hall. I beg your pardon. This unfortunate lady here is none other than the mother-in-law, twice removed, of Martha Washington. Oh, really? Mm, who died from pricking her finger in consequence of working on Sunday. Oh, what a pity. See the blood trickling? Also note the gold-eyed needle of the period, and don't think it isn't. <laughs> you know, if you hadn't told me, I'd have thought that was Betsy Rose. Huh? Dante and Beatrice. Know their story? I'd enjoy hearing your version much more. Well, it's a long one, see, Benson now. <laughs> you see, Dante and Beatrice loved one another very much. But then she went away from him, and oh, he was very unhappy. He'd find her again and again. But each time it was just another disappointment. So he decided to keep a nearly a um, phantom in his imagination. A dream in his loneliness. He could even kiss her. And she wouldn't wake. Fancy that she was listening. That his words were her words. Beatrice was very lovely and lost in the night. Beautiful dream. Stephen Dunn, hmm. aren't you a little mixed on your Dante and Beatrice? Well, maybe. But you liked the idea. Oh, very much. It suggests all sorts of things. For instance, it would be nice if you take me riding tomorrow morning in Central Park. Uh, Susan. My dear. My sweet. You would understand, wouldn't you, if I said I never want to see you again. This group over here, ladies and gentlemen, is the amazing portrayal of... Dante and his bear preacher. I beg your pardon, sir. Sorry. This most recent importation from Madame Tussauds in London, I can notice the lifelike coloring and expression. This group is truly... Well, want all those? Oh. Can you imagine what they're saying in Pittsburgh? No, dear, I can't. <laughs> well, now for the puppet show. Well, Andy, if you do, don't mind. It's all wonderful. I, I really have got to get back to the office. But we're going to make a day of it. No, you go on, Stephen. We understand. All right. We'll see you tomorrow, of course. I haven't seen a puppet show since I was a boy. I'd like to call your special attention to Gusto, the man that eats glass, broken bottles, mutton, in fact, any kind of broken glass. He thrives on it, my friend. I'm only your 
Thomas, you'll find that Firth Pond always encourages the young composer. Goodbye, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, Mr. Pond, I... How do you do? I'm sorry, Foster. I simply cannot advance you any more money. Oh, I didn't come for an advance, Mr. Pond. I came to deliver a new song. Another plantation song? No, sir. No, it's... Hmm. Beautiful... Dreamer. Yeah. Nice title. Come on in. We'll see what Mr. Cleaver thinks of it. Oh, I... Mr. Cleaver. Well, 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 well. <laughs> How glad I am to see you. How glad I am to see you. <laughs> Foster has just brought in a new song. I have an opinion of it. Well, uh, well, all, all right, we try it. <coughs> I'll, uh, I play it and uh, you sing it. Oh, well, dear, that's, that's, I think it's all right. Just, just, just take it easy. All right. That's beautiful. Mr. Pond, that's the best song you wrote yet. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. But it's the best in a long time. Thank you, Mr. Pond. Wait for me in my office, Stephen. I'll have Rod draw for contract. Well, if you don't mind, Mr. Pond, I'd rather have the cash. You can have the song outright for, oh, $25? As you wish. Thank you, Henry. <laughs> You don't got to thank me, Stevie. I meant every word I said. Say, where have you been keeping yourself? We don't see each other anymore lately. Well, I've been pretty busy, Professor. <laughs> you see, I... What a song is that? That's beautiful. And I thought he was finished. Then he writes this. What's wrong? What is he doing with his life? Throwing it away. Drinking. He don't care for nothing but money. Money, money! More money to send home. Can't something be done for him? We gotta try. You know, 
I'll do anything I can. I'm quite sure you will, my dear. We've made all the plans, but we're afraid that Stephen's pride will keep him away from the theater. Susan, I am quite certain that you're the only one Stephen will listen to. So here's what we want you to do. Go to his lodging and try and persuade him to come to the performance tonight. What is the matter? Oh, Susan. Susan. I... I don't want you to see me like this. I... I don't want you to see me like this. I... There are some things, man. Don't you know that... There's nothing you could do that would make any difference to me. You're not going to fail us. Fail? What do you mean? The performance in your honor tonight. They've planned it all. Worked so hard. A benefit performance for Stephen Foster. Oh, but it means so much to them. To Christy. To Cleaver. To me. To... Won't you please come? And if I did come, or if I didn't, would it matter so much to you? More than anything else in the world. Then I'll come. I'll try. I'll try. was coming, it'd be here now. Listen, Edmund. Maybe this is him. Well? He promised me he'd come, but I don't know. No, I was afraid. But we must get him here. It'll mean so much to him. His songs and... Henry. All right. I'll go. Good. Here's, can I go along? Get in. Thank you.
Don't worry, we'll, we, we'll still write it. Only this time, your simple melodies will be our theme. Mm. And soon? Soon. Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to go to sleep. And I'm grateful. Dear friends, gentle Gentlemen, as you all know, this performance was given in honor of our dear friend Stephen Collins Foster. It must now serve as a tribute to his memory. May I ask you, all of you, to stand in reverence to this great composer, to this man whose songs will never die. No more. 